Okay, before we start today's video on the actuator door on this 2013 Dodge Avenger, don't forget to like and subscribe. Okay guys, today what we have is a 2013 Dodge Avenger uh, and what we're dealing with is the actuator. This one has three actuators, however the one we're dealing with today is this side. There are two from under the bottom you can see on the passenger side. There's one right here. This one, if I'm not mistaken, that is for the temperature. There's one over here that this cable is running to. I'm not sure if it's just for the defrost or if it is for all modes, but I know specifically when you turn on the defrost or when you go through these modes and there's a clicking and it's coming from that one on the side. Now, there are only two screws in it. However, to change it, all you actually have to do is to unclip well what you do is you push in on this side of the glove box push in on this side of the glove box and then you have a little cord uh the string that holds on to it as well all you do is slide it down from the side and the glove box will hang then you have a clip here and a clip here if you want to pull it out now what i'm doing to try to make it easier that's still a tight space right in between there you can see it from this side as well but i want to open that space up you have one screw here 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 and then you have one here and one here once you take those out you should be able to remove this cover as well those screws have now been taken out so we're going to attempt to remove this cover there we go is there anything else here nothing else here so we're just gonna pull on it lightly. There we go, a little bit further. Let me set this down for a second, but all we're doing is lightly pulling along this edge to try to remove this cover so we have a little bit more space in there. Okay, so what we did was we pulled on the edges and this came down, now it is a lot more space to get right in there and you can get right on it now from this side or from right here now that we have this panel out. All it has is this one plug here and two screws. Some are Phillips, some are T-Stars. However, these are just two Phillips screws. I don't have my screwdriver with me, so we're gonna use the ratchet and Phillips set to go ahead and remove that. I'm gonna see if I can do this one-handed so I can show you all the process, but if not, all you have, one screw there, one screw here, and then I'm sure it hangs on um, with something. It may just have a little clip uh, or a little pin that holds it up. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to remove those two. If I can do it one-handedly, then I can show you guys. If not, then I may have to cut right back in after we take those out. But that's what we're going for now. This one here at the bottom. Again, just a regular a small Phillips head will work. I don't have one on me. So, we're using the ratchet set. Now that that one is loose, we're gonna go for the top one because I imagine that bottom one will be hard. Well, this, let me see, will be harder to get out. So, we're gonna take those now, out. We have removed those two screws and we're gonna try to attempt to go ahead and pull it out just like that. There we go. Okay guys, so for a recap, what we did was we took the glove box out first. All you have to do is push in on the passenger side or the right side and the left side at the same time and it will hang. Then you have this one cord with this string that holds it as well. All you do is push that down from the side. I'll show you on the glove box. It has a slip right there. It goes in and pulls up or goes in and pulls out. Once you drop it and it's hanging, it hangs on this one and it hangs on this one. And then you can just pull it out. Now, once you pull that out, you can clearly see it. However, it's a little bit harder to get to. So what I did was, this was the frame around it. I went ahead and dropped this as well. It was a little cover on the side and it was one more panel right here. All of those pop on and pop right off. You have one screw at this top corner you have one at the bottom here, you have one here, one here, and then you have two more 
at the bottom. They're not 100% necessary to take out the ones, well, the clips are the ones that aren't necessary. You have a clip there, it slid right out, and you have one here that's still in. Those aren't 100% necessary to come out because once you pull on it, once you get those screws out, you pull on it a little bit, you have a clip here, here, here. Once those come out, it'll hang easy enough to where you can get to it. But if you want to go ahead and drop it all the way, all you do is tug on it a little bit. You have a clip there and one more here that did come out. As for the actuator itself, all it had was one screw here, one above it, and it sits in this slot. And it has this one cable coming from the bottom. As for going back in, we went ahead and pulled this one out and we're gonna take it with us to the parts store to match it up. Once we match it up, we'll be going right back in with it. Again, this is the passenger actuator. Uh, well, not the passenger one, but the one on the right side, the outermost passenger side. I notice this one clicking when the car comes on and off, particularly when I go through the modes. Now, the one right here, if I'm not mistaken, that one is for temperature, the blend door actuator. Because when I go through the temperature, I could hear it, but there was no clicking. They do go out as well, and I believe it's another one over here on the driver's side somewhere. But this is the one we're going after because of the clicking you heard in the beginning of the video. So we're going to go ahead, take this to our parts store, match it up, and we'll be going right back in with it. The new part that I got was by Dorman. That's the part number there, 604. 029 so when you go to your parts store if you have the same one that you need replacing this outer right one right here then you have the part number as well so you can show them exactly what you need okay so now that we got all our tools out we have our part and we have it in place all the screws line up the same it plugs in the same and it does work okay, so that's the correct it had these two phillips screws in it so we're going to go ahead and get these two back in there that's a little bit hard to do one-handed but i'll show you all after we got them in it's just the one up in that corner and the one down in this corner just like how we took it out okay so now that we have the Phillips screw back in here and here. It's plugged in. We've checked all the modes and they're working. We're gonna go ahead and get this uh, glove box panel. Well, this is like the frame or outer ring for the glove box. We're gonna go ahead and get this one back up. Again, we just gotta pop this clip in right here and the one's going around the edge. And then we have a couple screws. So let's go ahead and get those popped in real quick. basically pop right in line right up the screws were teased I'm not sure on the exact size if I had to guess then I'd say it's a 15 and what we're doing is we're gonna use this power drill to make it a lot quicker so first we're gonna go ahead and put the one in in this corner and the one right here at the bottom Go ahead and get the top one lined up before we tighten that in all the way. There we go. Now we have two at the bottom. go one in this corner or to go one in this top corner right here and one in this corner here So 
So now we're ready to go back up with the glove box itself, which all we do there is those two bottom clips pop right in here. We got the aux cord running back through this one with this USB here. There we go. And then the sides just kind of pop. So now that we're able to get that all the way back in, glove box is back. You just got this one panel and this panel. And that's it. Let's move this one here. It may be easier to clip this one back on first. Slide right in. There we go. This one clips in right here. This one right back on top. Okay, this one actually goes in front of this one. So we can pop it back off or we can try to just slide this under like that. But this one actually goes down first and then this one goes on top of it. Well, you strip back in place and that's it. Again, once you drop the glove box, it probably could have been changed from there, but what we did gave us a lot more room, made it a lot easier, and you didn't have to worry about dropping or losing any screws in there. So glove box down you have a couple screws going around there two on the side right behind this panel and then this will pop right down you just got your two screws going in the side and that's it and again that's for the outer door actuator which i believe was controlled uh i believe it controls the mode as in head feet defrost and so on